Audi's devastating RS3 Sportback aims to rewrite the hot hatch rulebook. It's very, very fast, very, very usable, and very, very rare. Where will it all end? 20 years ago, it was almost unheard of for even the fastest hot hatch shopping rockets to boast more than 200 brake horsepower. Now, the quickest among them must have much more than that, a new breed of super hatches prioritizing speed above all else. It's a category that in recent times has been thrusting gullible buyers through a continual one-upmanship power spiral. 261 brake horsepower in a Volkswagen Scirocco R, 300 brake horsepower in the original Ford Focus RS, and 337 brake horsepower in a BMW 1 Series M Coupe. All are fast, not all, especially these three with power directed through just two driven wheels, are usably so. But here's a car that is, Audi's RS3 Sportback. It's a product of a very special division within Audi, Quattro GmbH, which as the name suggests, jealously guards a rich heritage of high performance four wheel drive engineering. Uh, first founded in world championship rallying and more lately perfected in a range of awesomely capable production models, each carefully chosen to wear the famous RS or Rennsport badge. Not all have pleased the pimply-faced, opposite-lock-smoking writers of motoring magazines, but you sense that that's, to some extent, intentional. Other rivals might offer a slightly more exhilarating driving experience uh, to a fortunate few when conditions are right. An RS product, in contrast, with its Quattro four-wheel drive, is designed to tame huge horsepower in a way that can be enjoyed by many more, on almost any road, at almost any time. And the difference is important, particularly when it comes to a car with 337 braked horses under the bonnet. Let's try it. The five-cylinder turbocharged four-wheel drive recipe used by this RS3 is an undeniably evocative one, precisely that used by the original Quattro Coupe model that launched Audi as a must-have brand back in the early 80s and thrust it into the World Rally Championship spotlight. It's all a bit more sophisticated these days. Uh, this transversely matched engine now developing vastly more power and borrowed direct from Audi's TTRS model, uh, developing precisely the same 337 brake horsepower output. Now, this engine fitted here doesn't sound quite as rorty as in that car, but fire the engine and as the rich base five-cylinder tone fills the cabin, you're still left in no doubt that what lies ahead is going to be a very special experience. Just how fast this car feels is difficult for me to put into words or capture on film. I could talk of a launch control assisted rest to 60 sprint time of 4.6 seconds. That's as fast as the original version of Audi's R8 supercar. Porsche 911 style performance that throws you at the horizon from the point that the turbo cuts in at around 1600 RPM and had you a runway would carry on until the speed limiter stopped the fun at 155 miles an hour. I could talk of 450 newton meters of torque that dispatches B-road dawdlers with hardly a thought or a power to weight ratio as good if not better than elite machinery like Maserati's Gran Turismo but you won't get it from any of that. You see, I've driven faster cars than this, but very few that I wanted to drive this quickly. At the wheel of this machine, you're suddenly transported into a world where you complete a twisting section of your favorite country road and wonder whether a Schumacher, an Alonso or a Hamilton could really have driven it that much quicker. You know, of course, that the car is to some extent compensating for your ham-fistedness, but somehow it doesn't matter. You have at that moment a glorious, if slightly dangerous, feeling of invincibility. Now, for such a journey, you have, of course, punched the sport button on the dashboard here. 
uh, sharpening the throttle response and releasing the full 1.2 bar of turbo pressure. At the same time, it opens a flap in the exhaust to further intensify the glorious engine note as you flip up and down the seven-speed twin-clutch S-Tronic gearbox with its steering wheel mounted gear shift paddles. It's a route you could have covered maybe a tenth or two quicker in a BMW 1 Series M Coupe or M3 or any supercar, but at the end of it, your palms and forehead would likely have been sweaty, your heart pumping furiously. Instead of which, your mind is at ease, Mozart's on the stereo, and you're free to return to rumination on the kind of day whose toil has doubtless made possible the purchase of a £40,000 hot hatch in the first place. You know, of course, that this car isn't perfect. The steering could do with a bit more feel, and the ride, which is 25% stiffer than that of a standard S3, crashes across ridges in the road that it should flow through, suggesting that this car was maybe developed more for the racetrack than it should have been. It's also unfortunate that the A3 model's age means that this one can't be fitted with some of Ingolstadt's latest engineering gadgetry, the kind of stuff we've already seen on the larger S4 model, the drive select adaptive suspension for example, or the kind of sport differential able to juggle power from side to side at the rear. Yet, thinking back on my time with this car, you know, the really hard driving times, as the Quattro drive train comfortably shuffled torque between front and rear axles to suit service and speed, I can't remember ever really missing the lack of a few knobs and buttons to push, nor can I really remember wishing I was in anything else. There are basically two types of RS3. You've got the extrovert kind, which has the standard 19-inch alloy wheels painted in black with red highlights, hardback bucket seats and Alcantara on the steering wheel, and the kind like this one that doesn't need to shout about its capabilities. It's uh, painted in a less vibrant colour. It has uh, unpainted wheels, standard sports seats, and more restrained uh, perforated leather on the steering wheel. Either way, those in the know will recognise this car immediately with its huge gaping air intakes in the nose, Xenon headlamps with integrated LEDs and enormous RS branded front grille. It rides 25mm lower than a standard A3 and features stiffer springs, dampers and anti-roll bars, plus sizeable 370mm front disc brakes, their aluminium covers encircled by four piston fixed calipers painted a high gloss black and finished with RS logos. Audi also makes much of the fact that on this model the usual steel fabricated front wings have been replaced by carbon fibre reinforced plastic ones. Now these are partly there to accommodate this car's wider track but mainly installed to keep this car's weight down. Even as it stands, uh, an RS3 weighs over one and a half tonnes. That's a portly 120 kilograms more than a comparable uh, two litre turbo A3 Sportback. Moving down the side of the car, there are sill extensions between the flared wheel arches, the usual uh, RS silver wing mirrors, and at the back, a neat roof spoiler, and a black diffuser sitting below the reprofiled rear bumper. At the wheel, a flat bottom steering wheel looks suitably racy and also makes getting in and out that little bit easier. I wouldn't personally go for the optional bucket seats that hold you a bit tighter, but also make you sit higher. These standard RS branded chairs are quite sufficient with their fine Nappa leather finish and contrasting silver stitching. The dash isn't much different from any other sportily trimmed A3, unless that is you go for the optional and rather lovely Alcantara trim, and is lifted either by uh, piano black gloss touches or by what Audi calls an aluminium race look. And in the rear, well, here is where you understand why Audi doesn't offer this variant with the three-door A3 body shape. Without the 83mm increase in length that the Sportback body style delivers with these five doors, then it really would be quite tight in here. As it is, like most cars of this kind, there's decent room for either two adults or three children, but more would be a squeeze. 
out back, there's 302 litres of luggage space up to parcel shelf level. And if you push forward the 60, 40 split folding rear seats, you can extend that to 1,032 litres. As usual, there are different ways of looking at the value proposition of a car of this kind. After all, many people would see around £40,000 as a great deal of money to spend on a focus-sized family hatchback, even a very fast one. Your local Audi centre, of course, will tell it differently, probably pointing out that this car is £7,000 less than their TT RS Coupe in equivalent guise, a model that offers exactly the same engine and a lot less practicality. They might though make less of the fact that an RS3 will cost you around £7,000 more than an S-Tronic equipped Audi S3 hot hatch and it gives you, well, less than 80 brake horsepower extra. Ultimately though, neither argument really matters very much since all 500 UK examples of this model have long been sold out and Audi won't be building any more. If you did happen to find one and wanted an opposition model to compare it to, then uh, most experts would probably point you in the direction of BMW's 1 Series M Coupe, a car with uh, similar power output and offered at a similar price, but giving you only two-wheel drive. Now, uh, if you don't want a Max Power style rally replica, something like a Subaru WRX STI or a Mitsubishi Evo 10, and you're looking for a, a classy four-wheel drive alternative to this Audi of similar size, then you're looking at paying less money but getting a lot less power. Rivals in this class include Volkswagen's less focused but arguably more usable 267 brake horsepower Golf R, essentially the same package as an Audi S3. Now most of what you're paying for with this car lies under the bonnet, but as you would expect for the money, there is quite a long roster of standard equipment. That includes uh, Xenon headlamps with integrated LED daytime running lights, 19 inch alloy wheels, acoustic parking sensors, leather sports seats, electronic climate control, and a DVD based satellite navigation system with Audi's MMI multimedia interface. There's also uh, the seven speed S-Tronic automatic gearbox, of course, there's no manual option. And the S-Tronic system here incorporates a launch control so you can blow away less potent machinery at the traffic lights. In terms of options, you can specify um, front bucket seats and uh, also matte aluminium roof rails along with matte aluminium or black styling packages. There are five paint colors to choose from and a range of fearsomely expensive custom paint finishes. Safety wise, there are all the usual airbags and to try and ensure that you never have to use them, there's an almost endless roster of electronic acronyms to look after braking, traction and stability control. The last named item also has a sport setting that loosens things up a bit if you're throwing the car around on track. Despite its prodigious power output, the Audi RS3 has a surprisingly benign side to it. Drive it gently and you might even approach the quoted 31 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel return, while the 212 grams per kilometre of CO2 reading doesn't seem to really tally with a car able to worry a Porsche 911. Now all this is made possible by the latest in direct injection engine technology, brake energy regeneration and uh, an oil pump that only works on an on-demand basis. That said, it's impossible to run a car with this sort of potential and not rack up some fairly serious bills. Uh, the RS3's cachet should keep resale value strong in the short term. Indeed, industry specialist CAP reckoned that at launch it offered the strongest residuals of any series production car. But expensive options will hurt come resale time. And insurance won't be cheap either at uh, a top of the shop Group 50. Plus, bear in mind if you're thinking of doing any track day tyre smoking, that the tyres supplied bespoke items that rather curiously are narrower at the rear than they are at the front will be extremely expensive to replace. There's a lot to be said for excess capability, something you'll find plenty of in this RS3 Sportback. 
Yes, uh, a 337 brake horsepower hatchback may appear to offer up a case of overkill, but this Audi is so well executed, so subtle in its outlook, that you could own one without being mistaken for a, a boy racer trying to relive a second motoring childhood. With awesome overtaking ability, all-weather capability, and a practical side that will endear it to many, this car could represent an ideal choice for well-heeled buyers who've outgrown powerful sports coupes and ordinary fast hatches. It's true that like the TT RS before it, this RS3 trades the last couple of percentage points of focus for genuine everyday utility. But it's also true that while this might make it a couple of seconds slow around the Nürburgring, it also makes it a vastly better car for the majority of customers. People who live in the real world. A very fast world indeed.